sprint legend Usain Bolt has been appointed to the board of directors of gaming company Supreme Ventures Limited. And that company will also be operating two lottery games in Ghana. So what other growth and expansion plans do they have in mind for SVL? Joining me now to discuss, we have Executive Chairman of Supreme Ventures Group, Gary Peart. Hello. Hey, Khalil. How are you doing? I am good. It's good to see you. It's been a minute. Hey. I feel COVID. like I haven't seen you in person since COVID. It's been <laughs> some COVID time. Mash up. COVID mash up everybody, man. You can't see nobody. But happy to see you now. Yes. All right. Well, first of all, so we know you from Maber. We also know you're on the chair of, uh, of Supreme Ventures and you have a lot right. going on. But tell us about your role with Supreme Ventures Group and what that company has been up to. Well, as the title, the title indicates, I'm the executive chairman. So what that means is that I'm a chairman of the board of directors and I'm also the group CEO of the group of companies. And how long has Supreme Ventures been around? Ah, we celebrate. We celebrated twenty-two years on Monday. Very, very nice. People love. People love the cash pot. Cash pot hey. has always been a part of the the brand, or was that one of the? Did that come around afterwards? Um, so cash pot is our main product, um, and it's a product that is well known by the Jamaican public. You know, we make winners every day, um, but we have several other brands, um, and obviously the company itself is a brand. Mm-hmm. So let's start with, you know, the biggest recent news, which is Usain Bolt being appointed to the board of directors. What was the thought process behind that decision? Well, you know, I find it interesting. Uh, we actually appointed two directors. Um, we appointed um, Director Matt, Matt Knight, who was a former senior partner of PwC, as well as Director Bolt. You know, so we have several directors on the board and we welcome both Director Matt Knight and um, Director Bolt to the board of directors. But tell me why, like, what was the process of getting Usain Bolt, Supreme Ventures? What's the synergy that you see there? Um, you know, what I see and what the board of Supreme Ventures see in Director Bolt, um, we think is obvious. Um, based on some of the responses I've seen, I've realized it's not that obvious to most. So, for example, Director Bolt is currently the youngest director on the board. Um, so he can give a perspective from a demographic that we didn't have before. Um, there's a lot of positives about him. Um, Supreme is now a global company. We're operating in three three different countries outside of Jamaica. Um, we have pretensions to 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 access several other other countries. Um, Director Bolt, as well as several other directors on the board, have international experience, exposure, and networks. And fundamentally, he's also a wealthy individual, an investor in his own right, a businessman in his own right. Um, it's clear that a lot of people don't see that side of him. Um, but that side of him, you know, has significant contributions to a business like SVL to make. Mm. Well, give us some background on Leighton McKnight, who's the other director you mentioned, has been appointed recently as well. Yeah, so Leighton used to be the senior partner of PwC. PwC is one of the largest, if not the largest, auditing and accounting firms in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Um, he was a senior partner for several years. He retired over, uh, two years ago. And, you know, come, after retiring, somebody that has that type of um, knowledge-based skill set is, you know, it's very important to a business like ours, you know. So, you know, the intention obviously is he'll be, he'll form a part of the audit and risk committee of the board, and he will help to increase the governance and how we go about doing business as SVL. Good stuff. Uh, going back to Bolt, so are you going to be using his image or do you just want his expertise on your board? Um, you know, <sighs> Director Bolt is just like several other directors on the board, you know, um, so it's more from the business perspective. Um, you know, as I said, he brings he he brings a particular perspective that we would be able to to benefit from, but also he can also benefit from, you know, a lot of the advice of the other directors as we look at doing the business. 
Um, you know, I know I know a lot of people only see Director Bolt in a particular light, but he has, as I said before, he has significant other facets associated with Yes, him. he has a strong business background. We've been trying to get him on the show for some time, but since since your two your friends know <laughs> your your business associates, you yeah. know, pass on the word what he's whatever he's ready, tell him we have an open invitation here on Taking Stock. I'd love to talk to him about his multiple business ventures. But sure. tonight we're talking about Supreme Ventures. You've right. expanded to Ghana, which is very, very exciting. We did a whole um, piece about that a few weeks ago. Tell yeah. us why Ghana and what this expansion is expected to bring. Well, you know, a couple of years ago, actually just before COVID, um, one of the biggest value change changes in the history of Supreme occurred. And interestingly, you know, the majority of investors out there have not really understood it or taken advantage of it. And that change was when we developed and launched our proprietary lottery software. And we rolled out that lottery software. Um, we rolled out that lottery software um, in the Guyana market that we entered. And since then, it has actually it has it has actually gotten international certification by the GLI Labs. Um, what that has done, it puts Supreme in a position where we can now compete with other large lottery companies for lottery licenses across the world. And if you put things into perspective, Kalila, Supreme made twenty million equivalent of twenty million US in two thousand and twenty two from a population of 3 million people in Jamaica. You do the mm. math. Ghana has 34 million people. Um, so, you know, once you once a game is is set in Ghana, you can understand what's going to come down the pike. You know, so any reasonable average investor doing the forward PE. So, you know, the average investor looks on historical PE and trailing PEs, but, you know, the really savvy investors look at what we call forward PEs where you project um, future income and you get an idea as to where stock prices are likely to be. Anybody who tries to do that um, using some of the basic information that's out there, in my opinion, $25 seems cheap. But, you know, some people want to see things happen before they do, they, they make investments. Um, the probability of it being at 25 at that point is maybe particularly low, <laughs> but hmm. to each zone. <laughs> so strong link says, Enough oil money running a Guyana going, at, yeah, strong link. It's Ghana. Oh, it's that. Ah, I was about Ghana. to say that. For some reason, Kalila, people always get it mixed up. Ghana, Guyana. It's two different, two different. It, it does sound kind of similar. Two different, two different countries. countries. Guyana's right. in South yes. America, Ghana's in Africa. Right. But Correct. Why specifically Ghana, though? Like, of all the countries in the world, like 280 something countries. And, I, and I'm not saying it's a bad move, it's a great move. But why Ghana? Like, what? advantage did you see that made you choose that country to be your first outside of Jamaica expedition? Um, so in the world of gaming, it's it's not about what you want to do, it's what is available. You know, and you know, we we have put in several bids in different countries and continents across the world. And we've finally been successful in Ghana. And you know, if tomorrow morning I'm successful in Antarctica, I'll go there too. <laughs> um, but we are we are actually very happy that it's it's Ghana. And as, as I said to my marketing team, you know, I don't know if it's godsend um, because we were working at this for over two years, and as as the, as the Lord destined it, you know, we got the we got the license on a particular date. And one of the key provisions of the license is that we need to be operational within ninety days, and that ninety days actually carries us to August one. Kalila, what is August one in Jamaica? <laughs> in the emancipation day holiday. emancipation day and so it is it is it is alleged that the majority of jamaicans came from slaves from ghana mm -hmm. so in ghana they have slave forts and they have what's called the gate of no return when they put the slaves out on the ship and in recent time they've created a new gate that's called the gate of return so what's the probability that a Jamaican company gets a license in Ghana and has to start on August 1, emancipation? Wow. It's poetic justice. Hey, I would say poetic. Um, so we're, I mean, it, it's, it's indicators like that, um, you know, that, you know, we feel we're on the right track. Um, and we want to make a big deal about it. 
one of the things again is that Supreme has grown up. I mean, we have an excellent um, workforce, um, you know, and it's it's being displayed now. We have a project team that's work, that's ensuring that we can hit that deadline to roll out in time. And, you know, we appointed Claire Ann Kennedy as CEO for Ghana. That's a big move for us. Um, but even here locally, the team is just is just performing above and beyond. I mean, IT with Aiden Whitaker, you know, I give him a lot of trouble, but he's I'm just trying to push him. And that's what we do. Um, we're making people bigger and better. You know, Heather in our marketing side, you know, Hesus Johnson, Dewey and Tolo. Those guys, I mean, they're just phenomenal in, 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 in their leadership ability and how they've been able to pull the team together because this is a big thing for a Jamaican company to expand outside um, of its shores. And so we want to make sure we dot the I's, cross the T's to make sure this thing is definitely a success. Have you been there, by the way, to Ghana? Yes, I've been there several times. Um, well, what is it like as a Jamaican? Like, Describe what your first experience going to Ghana was like. So Ghana, Ghana is a paradox. So you will go to Ghana and see somebody that looks like you, Cleo. I mean, there is no if, ands, or buts that a lot of us came from Ghana. You see a lot mm -hmm. of people that look like people in Jamaica. They act I mean, like us, too. Huh? <laughs> They yeah. act like us too. <laughs> they, they, they do. I mean, um, on the way to some of the rivers and stuff. I mean, when you hear the history of it, it's very emotional. When you go to the slave forts and stuff, and still the atrocities that were committed there. But why I say it's a it's 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 a paradox. You will you will go to certain places in Ghana, and it's like 1950s in Jamaica. Um, wow. But in the same breath, Ghana has one of the most technologically advanced mobile wallet platforms. I mean. Mm -hmm. Their ability to do electronic payments is way ahead of where we are in Jamaica. You know, um, when you pull up at a stoplight, you really feel that you are at the intersection of um, Waterloo and um, Trafalgar. You know, they're selling all sorts of things and stuff, you know. So there are, there are a lot of similarities. Um, but they're very religious. Um, they also have a very large Muslim population, even though the majority of the population is Christian. Um, and they're much more conservative, especially the women. You know, really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially women. And um, but they love Jamaica. They love Jamaican stuff, you know. So there are there are a lot of stuff that we can we can we can work with. Um, you know, so there's some similarities. There are other things that we can take advantage of. I mean, they've just gotten into an IMF agreement before it, you know, just before we got the license. Somebody's like, Are you sure your interest rates are twenty percent? You know, inflation wow. this. I'm like, dude, we're from Jamaica. We had interest rates at 120 percent and made money, <laughs> so this is nothing, you know. But um, it's 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 interesting. It's uh it's a uh, it's 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 different, but it's nice. It's it's as I said, I believe when we go there and Supreme does what we normally do, um, you know, we're going to reach out to all the different categories of of, of people in the country, and we want to bring the games that make people happy and and win. You know, I think if we do that, um, we'll have an we'll have a significant inroad into the continent. Uh, what is it like doing business in Ghana? Like, how easy or difficult is it to get through the bureaucracy, for example, compared to Jamaica? So again, it's the same paradox I speak about. There are simple things that takes a long time, and there are other things that move um, very quickly. I mean, digital is huge. You know, you go into a, you go into a market and you see somebody select fresh fish. And then you see they take out your cell phone and they look on the fishmonger and say, hey, what's your address? And they tell them and then they literally just press it in and you see the fishmonger take up her phone and she sees the cash come and then she just wraps up the fish and gives it to them. You know, so you you you, you see that kind of thing, I mean, um, which is just very different from what you have here. Um, but on the flip side, you know, you, you go into the, the urban areas and one of the big things is there's respect for the elders. So the person that was the most important person in the village has the biggest billboard for their funeral. You know, you're, you're going through a village and you see billboards of, you know, Kalila Richards, 1930 to 1999. And, you know, that's that's a big thing. The bigger the, the, bigger the funeral um, billboard is. is wow. Funeral, you know? um, so they're, 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 they're simple things, you know. Um, so. It's about how do you blend in uh, with our local partners, you know, that we're trying to learn a lot about. The food is, I mean, the food is amazing. You know, um, they don't eat Aki's. You see Aki's falling off on the tree all over the place. But they, they they specialize in a lot of natural stuff. 
um, fruits, vegetables, etc. Um, you know, their their food is a little bit different from some of the stuff we do, um, but it's something we get used to. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you made that point about doing about um, mobile money and cashless society, yes. because every time I put out a video about Jamaica going cashless or moving towards cashless, people start cuss me and say, well, how will the little man on the street get paid? How about the market people? And I don't understand that in many, many countries, this is how yes. it's done and it's beneficial to yeah. even the small, every single level that you yeah. have. Yeah. It is it is huge there. I mean, literally at the stoplight and you see people transacting transacting business with their phones. So you pay I mean, a wiper, the wiper guys with, with um, mobile money? Not all of them, but you know, one or two of them. But as I said, I mean, the, the whole system is, is set up that way. And, you know, what is good is, for example, I mean, SVL has one of the largest online businesses locally, you know, because you can play the lotto online, you can play, you can buy your horse racing stuff online, Acropolis is online. I mean, in fact, the Super Lotto winner, before this last Super Lotto winner, he pay, he placed his bet on our SV Games app online, you know. So... Um, it's not new to us, and it's also another ab ability for us to expand because whilst we're going there with lottery, SVL as a group has other areas, our fintech side of the business, that you know it's an opportunity for us to integrate and expand our revenue lines accordingly. Mm. There's part of the question you didn't answer, though. I asked how easy or difficult is it to do business like with the government? What's the bureaucracy like? For, for example, what did it take to get your gaming license? Well, um, the gaming license was pretty difficult in terms of, you know, you have to go through different machinations. So one of the biggest thing is that the lottery that they have is a five in 90. So you draw five balls, five, five numbers from 90 balls. Um, so, you know, our two games, pick one, which we call cash bot here in Jamaica and pick four are very different from what they're, they're used to. I mean, their lottery game is over 50 years old. Um, so having to explain the difference um, in that took some time. Um, but, for example, Ghana has a fixed exchange rate. You, you can't just move foreign exchange out of the country. And so there are certain approvals that you need to have. So when you're Ooh. setting up, you know, for certain fees you charge, you have to get um, an agency similar to Jampro to give you approval to do certain things. Um, but it doesn't take as long as, for example, it might take in Jamaica for some of those similar similar approvals. So you have certain things that move very quickly and you have other things that will take time. You know, so you just have to manage it. And I, like, this is where your local partners become very important. Um, they can help you navigate um, these things as you get to understand it, the country and the way they do business. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just about to say... Um, you know, the, Ghana is actually seen as one of the more stable countries in Africa, the African continent. Even though they're entering an IMF agreement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I spoke to him about IMF agreement, I said, that's not a problem. You know, we always come out of it early. <laughs> they're just so confident that, you know, um, whatever is required, they're going to beat it. And already you see the changes that they're making, um, the legislation, the structural changes in the economy. And, you know, when you look on their history, they've always exited IMF agreements significantly earlier than the, the projected end date. You know, so Ghana is a country that is blessed with a lot of resources. Ghana has oil, they have gold, minerals, um, you know, all sorts of different food, etc. You know, so, you know, it's, 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 as I said, it's a more stable, stable, stable country relative to some other African countries. Um, but the point I was trying to make to you, because they're seen that way, Currently, the Ghanaian lottery is beamed to around six neighboring countries, you know. So that's also another hidden opportunity for us, because if our game does very well in Ghana, um, one would expect that that game would attract um, would attract people playing from those countries. And the total population of those six countries is in excess of 250 million people. Wow. You and know, especially so. since it's all online and they're already used to operating in that mobile capacity. What's to stop me from playing in Nigeria? I can just go online and buy the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Marvin wants to hear, he says, we need to hear more about the strategic moves SVL will make in Ghana. 
What can you tell us? What does he define as strategic? I mean, I'm just rolling out my lottery. I roll out a lottery, put in a marketing plan, and hopefully people like it and come and play. And once they play, they make money, we make money, everybody's happy, the government makes money, just like we do here in Jamaica. For 2022, we contributed $10 billion to the coffers of the, the consolidated fund. You know, and that's actually the best strategic move that Supreme has. You know, when we go to these different jurisdictions, we go with a win-win-win strategy in that, you know, there's enough money to be made that you can split it with the government, you can split it with the regulator, the SVL shareholders get some money, and most importantly, the betting and waging public, they benefit the most. Well, Daniel has some more specific questions. You know, you come on taking stock, Gary. Our viewers, they come with the, with the brains, intelligence, the, the, the bright questions. So Daniel says, you spoke about market size. What is your penetration strategy and capital outlay? Target market size. What's the competition like there and your unique selling point? A bunch of questions. Let's start with the last set. Competition and your unique selling point. What are you really going into? Well, for, obvi for obvious reasons, I won't answer all of those questions um, because I'm sure my competitors in Ghana and elsewhere might want to hear the answer to all of those. Mm. Um, so I will say for most of those questions, you will see. Um, the key, what I'll answer in terms of the competition, the main lottery game there, if not the only lottery game, there is a 5 in 90 jackpot lottery game. So they've never seen what we have in terms of cash bot as a pick one. It's called pick one there. Um, we're going to launch on the different um, brand, which you'll see come August 1, and also pick four. You know, So we believe those games will be more attractive. And there are certain features of those games which are not present in the Ghanaian environment right now that we think will help us with our penetration strategy. Um, for obvious reasons, I won't speak specifically to it um, because, again, the, the, the business and the secret sauce associated with what we do um, sometimes if you, if you articulate it clearly, it makes it much harder to penetrate with your, with your competitors trying to do the same thing. You mentioned earlier that Ghana is a very religious and a very conservative country. Yes. What is their attitude towards gambling? Well, I mean, they've had lotteries, a lottery, a lottery environment for over 50 years. And, you know, one of the big opportunities that we face is that they also have a very large underground economy um, that participates in the gaming space. And so when I speak about one of the win-win-win strategies is that, you know, what we are seeking to do is likely to reduce that underground somewhat or take market share from that underground which the government and the regulator in Ghana would benefit from because they're charging us a fee based on how much business that we generate. Um, you know, so the point is, just, just like Jamaica, we are relatively religious here in Jamaica, but we still have space for people to gamble. I think it's important to say this. No matter what you do, people are going to gamble. So the question is, do you regulate it and collect a fee and then put some of that some of those resources back to good causes or do you allow the underground economy to, to, th to thrive and then move some of those resources into buying guns and ammunition to increase crime in the society elaine has a question elaine jungle i hope i'm saying your name right because he mentioned earlier <laughs> Elaine, I'll talk to you after this, after we finish this interview. He says, talk to us about the marketing plans if possible. How does SBL plan to make your presence felt? Maybe a partnership with a local home athlete. Um, you know, so when you think about, the most I would say, think about a lot of the things we do here in Jamaica and the fact that Ghana is similar to Jamaica in many ways. So we can use a lot of those up, a lot of those strategies in Ghana. So, for example, you refer to an athlete. I mean, here in Jamaica, SVL is one of the major sponsors of the Jamaica Olympic Association. You know, so we probably could do something like that in Ghana. Football is huge in Ghana. It actually do off so almost every other sports in, in, in sport in Ghana. So again, that's something we could align ourselves with. Um, so there are different areas of the economy that the market research is saying to us, this is where you need to make the move and align yourself. Again, for competitive reasons, I won't give you specifics there. Right. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we're a business that's been around for 22 years now in Jamaica. 
And if you go across Jamaica, it, it, it'll be difficult to find somebody that has not heard of Cashpot worse Supreme Ventures. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't get and maintain that type of market and market presence if you don't understand what your what your customer is about. And I think that's the big secret about us here at SVL. We spend a significant amount of money trying to understand what is happening with our customer. You know, so we feel we'll do something similar in Ghana. Murphy wants to know about the money. Murphy said, is there a possibility for higher dividend for the stock if the company does well in Ghana? Well, how I answer that question, right now, SVL's dividend policy is to pay out 90% of its, its, its profits. You know, I don't know how much further that can go. I need some money to expand the business, Jesus. So in terms of nominal nominal numbers, if Ghana does well, yes, the dividend is going to get significantly higher. Yeah. So obviously, um, if you have more profit and it's a right. percentage, you're going to get percentage, more. percentage, is still the same 90% because it's... Remember, the digital, well, not remember, you wouldn't know this, but dividend policy of 90% came when you had a mature company that didn't have a lot of growth growth prospects, so you dividend all the cash. We have now transformed um, SVL into a growth company, which is why we feel we can maintain and increase the current price multiple that is there in the stock. Um, because you're growing, you're growing rapidly and you're also paying significant dividends, right? Which again, I don't think the average investor in Jamaica has really paid attention to that, to that point. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, I think we're entering a rapid and very large growth phase, you know. So if we are able to achieve even 10, 20 percent of what we're trying to do, the impact on our bottom line is going to be material. Absolutely. So are there any other countries that you're licensed in and offering or looking to offer gaming? Well, you know, we're currently in Guyana. We, we export our draw to South Africa, um, and we're now in Ghana. As I said to you before, we now have our own proprietary software, and it makes us very nimble. And, you know, some of our, for a better word, lottery software competitors need anywhere in excess of nine months to a year to roll out in a, in a country. We are basically doing it in 90 days, and that gives us a tremendous competitive advantage. And as I said, Wherever there is an opportunity to get a license, we're going to be trying and we're trying to bid. Um, currently, we have done Ghana by ourselves. We have partners that are willing to come in with us, depending on the size of the country. So, again, you know, look at this space. And, you know, just to put it into perspective, Kalila, last year was our record year in terms of profit. Well, it was a new record. We've been making records almost every year since we've been here. Um, and we made 20 million US, 3 billion Jamaican dollars, right? Our lottery software provider in Jamaica, IGT, the check I drew them for their services for 2022 was close to 15 million US. I mean, about 13 to 15 million US. Nice. Next, right? So if you stop and think about it, right? In Jamaica, SVL that you know is what we is what Game Park in in Ghana is. And in Jamaica, IGT is equivalent to what SVL Ghana is going to be to the game park. So we're being that lottery software provider where your risk is significantly less and you're almost getting the same amount of profit as the actual licensee in the, in, in, in the jurisdiction. So what you have, which is why I'm saying the moment we announced that we had our own proprietary software, what it meant is that Every single time we find a jurisdiction or announce a license, you're putting increased revenue on a platform that you've already amortized the cost, right? And so the future flows for that aspect of our business is huge, right? And so that's why we invested in it and we continue to invest not just in that technology, but some other technologies that we're doing. We have our own proprietary top-up um, phone platform now, uh, which is called Charge Up. And so that allows us to expand, that allows us to expand um, our margins. So put it into perspective, Kalila, in Jamaica, my terrestrial distribution system, I have to pay my retailers 5% for a, a fixed location. Digital, 
because of the, when I put in the cost of developing, et cetera, the digital cost is anywhere from one to 2%. As I put new markets on top of that software, that effective cost gets less and less, right? So if you stop and put it into perspective, right? The, the size of the local lottery, give or take, let's use 300 million US as a number. It's a little bit higher than that, but let's use 300 million US. Every 1% that I can save in any part of my business in SVL drives $3 million US to my GP. Wow. That's in a country of 3 million people. So when you start to move the population size that you are serving and you start to clip these one percentage points, right? So let's let's do some hypotheticals, right? Let's say the business in in Jamaica is a 3 million population, lottery size is 300, 300, 300 million US, right? One percent is 3 million. If you extrapolate and we can do what we've done here in Jamaica, in Ghana, 34 million, that means it suggests that a lottery size can grow to 3 billion. So when, for every 1% that you save, that's how much, Kalila? 3 million US. 1%. For, for, for Jamaica. Right. <laughs> so in Ghana, it would be 25 million. No, you have to add a zero. It's 10 times bigger. So it would be 30 million US per 1%. <laughs> That's uh, probably the large numbers, then. Kalila. Yeah. You know what? You know what your dividend look like if you were SVL um, shareholder. So again, this is not a guarantee that it will happen. All I'm saying is that all of my stars in my organization, because I am the simple one, I surround myself with a bunch of bright and brilliant people at Supreme, right? And they learn faster than me, right? So if they've been able to do this in Jamaica. And if we can do that similar in Ghana in two to three years, you want to work out that P, you want to work out that dividend. Wow. You want to work out that stock price. So, you know, what it is, this is what makes us so excited here, right? Because yes, there is a risk of failure, right? But the risk of success gives you numbers that just put you into the stratosphere. And that's 30 million people, right? So if we do that, what happens if every time I announce on your ju jurisdiction? Mm -hmm. You're the math brain. Tell me how it go. Yeah, money. That's how it goes. I'm going to take a couple of final questions. So Kizzy wants to know, Will SVL be importing, or I guess exporting from Jamaica, existing staff, or will be will you be using staff in Ghana? So that's that's a brilliant question. So you know that's that's a question that's very dear to my heart. Um, whilst I was making my way up the corporate ladder in Jamaica, one of the things that I've always seen, and I said to myself, you know, if ever I've been blessed to get in a position where I could do something about it was I've always seen multinational companies come to Jamaica. And you have the, you know, they you have a term expatriates. And you know, they always got the biggest salaries, they always got the biggest benefits. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I wish one day, you know, I've been charged of a business that I can have expatriates and send them. They're but they're Jamaican and they're gonna be seen as expatriates and they're gonna have the best of the best. Guess what, Kalila? Mm -hmm. Guess what, Kalila? So we have Jamaican expats going to Ghana. Yeah. So that is like a bucket list that in the business world that, you know, I was always looking forward to. So at Supreme, we have job rotation. We, we have people that we, we send off to different universities, et cetera, um, to get to, to better themselves. Because I've been saying to the team at SVL, this day is coming. And when it comes, you need to be ready. So what I've said to them, I'm not guaranteeing that they will, they will get the jobs. They have to make themselves ready because we have to now go into the worldwide pool of, of labor um, to get the best person. But if there's a tie between the Jamaican talent and the foreign talent, I am going to send or I would I would support sending the Jamaican talent. You know, um, and as I said, this is a challenge that I've, I've given 
to the leaders in the company. This is a challenge that I've given to their direct reports. Get yourself ready because the opportunities that you're going to have, right? You know, you don't know when it's going to come around again. So the, the simple the simple answer to the question is yes, I would want to send the Jamaican workers there because the other opportunity that we have is that you don't go to university to get a gaming degree. There are very few universities, that, if at all, right, that actually tell you about gaming. You get a degree in some other thing and you end up in a gaming company and you learn about it. This is the huge opportunity every single employee of SVL has, that you are already in our ecosystem. So if we are expanding internationally, you have the first, the right, for better word, the right of first refusal to get these jobs. And once you qualify, trust me, the team will send you. And I think as we do that, it opens a new avenue and area, not just for the company as a business, but to grow people, right? A lot of people here in Jamaica just think that the only place you can go is the United States and you're going to have to go and work for another team, another place there. You have a Jamaican company that's joining very few Jamaican companies that have expanded outside of Jamaica and has the potential to continue this expansion for many, many years to come. So I was going to leave it there. But there's been one question that keeps popping up in the chat. People keep coming back to it from the very start of your interview. I was skipping it. I was ignoring the question. But sure. you can't insist, help the people insist, so I'm going to ask it. So here we go. It's, this one comes from Leon. Please expound on the decision to add Usain versus Asafa, who has marital linkage and local brand power. <laughs> <laughs> um. So... Let me let me deal with this because I actually I personally guys I think you know you saying is one of the greatest talents that this country has ever produced not just as an athlete right he's a guy that is brilliant in many other ways but I think a lot of Jamaican companies miss a very great advantage a very a very big advantage somebody that I think rivals you saying in the in the business world as a very good director is a Chris Gale. Chris Gale can pick up the phone and call any Indian billionaire and he'll take his call because of who he is. So if he's aligned with the right company, right, and they understand the business aspect of it, I mean that's a huge opportunity, right? The same can be said about a lot of our Jamaican, not just athletes, but Jamaicans that go outside of Jamaica. And what happens and what I've learned and I've seen it, you know, with the announcement of Director Bolt is that people are comfortable with certain people in boxes and they don't understand certain things. When if you are blessed with the opportunity to travel the world, you will see things that you're not seeing here in Jamaica. So all of our Jamaican legends, um, you know, athletes, that has gone abroad, whether sprinting, whether boxing, whatever the sport is, even the administrators that have gone abroad, right? Um, they will see certain things that any local business that have pretensions to go global, those people can help you, right? And the thing is that they don't, they, some of these people don't speak a lot about it, but you know that's the case once you're in the ecosystem. So people are comfortable. With, with people like, I mean, I think Shelly and Fraser Price would be a tremendous asset as a board director, right? And so, because again, just within the ecosystem, if, if you stop and think about it, a lot of these people are very wealthy. A lot of these people have, have interacted with global brands that have given them sponsorships. They don't just sit one side and, you know, it's just a manager that does it. At some point, they have to come back and say, hey, what do you think about this? So they have that knowledge. But the average person doesn't pick up on it. Again, for me, um, I interact with people very differently. And, you know, I see things that the average person will not necessarily see because they're just not focused on that. You know, so interestingly, as life would have it, when I went to Ghana and the license was issued and I was celebrating the, 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 the light issues of the license at the, the tallest bar in Ghana. Who turns up, Kalila? Asafa. <laughs> you know? So 
they're all they're all dancing there the night. I don't mean so that any opportunity those opportunities can happen, you know. But what I will say to people is I don't I think all of them are great in their own right. And Jamaica is still a relatively poor country in that, you know, in certain we have a very we have relatively have a high debt um GDP per capita at around five thousand US. But you know us Jamaicans, we 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 strive for much more. Right. And where we are as a country, where we are as a people, there is so much more that we can do for each other to work with each other as opposed to compete with each other. So even how the question is free is phrased. And I mean, I'm not burning fire on the question. You know, it should never be a Safa versus versus bold. Right. Because the little that we've seen of both of those guys when they work together, you think about that four by one, really, those guys broke records that we never saw before. And so, so my thing is, as Jamaica, I mean, I'm happy that Director Bolt is with us. Um, I'm, I hope other athletes will get that opportunity or other Jamaican um, legends will get that opportunity, right? And I think there's just so much that we can get by working with each other. Don't pit them off against each other. It's not about who's better, who's who's worse. If we come together as a people and extract all the different brand values associated with all of these different icons, cricket, you name it. I mean, there's just there's just so much money out there, right? For us to get that trust me, not even in your lifetime, Kalila, we'll scrape even 0.01% of it. <laughs> right? But we'll try. And I think <laughs> coming together as a Jamaican community, because I, I, I know it's something I'm passionate about. I'll chat for a while on it, but I'll say this to you. Kalila, one of the big things that we're seeing now in the Supreme Group is over at Caymanas, right? So we have strategically decided to enter the horse racing ecosystem. The team has just come back from Royal Ascot. I was at the Belmont Stakes two weeks ago, Hong Kong Derby. And when you go Kalila, when people hear that you're from Jamaica, the conversation starts. The networking becomes so simple. Everybody wants to come. Who has never come has been here several times. We are, we, we are so golden, we don't understand. We don't understand the opportunity that is in front of us. If we could just stop fighting each other and badminding each other, this country would explode so big, so positively. You would never understand. Biggest problem we face: bad mind. Bad mind. But bad mind. We can, we can, we can get past it. And you know, as I said, I think Supreme has a huge opportunity. Um, and everybody, everybody at SVL is trying to take advantage of that. Um, I think as we do, as we take advantage of it, it's just going to grow in potential. You know, so we're trying to do it properly. We're trying to do it right, you know, um, and we hope for the best. By the well, I hope for the best, too. I, I'm really, you know, wishing you all the best in your venture into Ghana and new markets. And we're keeping our eye on it to see what happens, how it goes. But we are rooting for you, Gary, and the well, SBL team and the, the Jamaican I'll, expats. The only <laughs> thing I'll say to you, Kalila, and your team is don't get up five years from now and say, you know, I did this interview with Gary Peart and I decided to wait and see. And in five years time, when you see where the stock is, don't be the one to say, Jesus, why I never buy then? Mm. On that note, final comment comes from Leon, who says, great pre presentation. I'm keen to invest SVL APO loading. <laughs> And Strong Link says, uh, oh, oh gosh, I missed the comments. Steve says, buy the stock. And Strong Link says, that's the money we need to get. Hey, right. as I said, word. every stock I'm involved in, it's a buy. It's always a buy. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, make sure you follow him on Twitter. You know. I'm not there. I'm not oh, it's there. not I'm you. Not it's there. Chris. Chris is always tweeting. Chris, Chris Berry. Is yeah, Chris is always, always tweeting. tweeting. Yeah, well, thanks so much for joining me. And like I said, I wish you guys all the best. And we Thank will you. have you back on in five years and see you know, where the stock is. And we'll play back the clip. Maybe you might do it in two. Who's to say? Hey. <laughs> right. Love, love, Camila.
it's a date. We don't <laughs> respect the rest of the people out there. All right. Okay.